Welcome back, everybody, for the last episode of Business Resilience in a New Normal. It's been so great to do this series, and this is episode number 10, and this time I have two people with me, and I'm super excited because we're going to be talking about office space and what can you do for this new normal. Again, my name is Flavila Fondeng, and I'm the founder of Free Colors Wool. I'm a brand strategist. Free Colors Wool is a branding and marketing agency. And you know, people know me as well as a speaker, podcast host, mentor, I do a lot of things and I enjoy what I do. And today with me, I have two amazing gentlemen. I'm going to move my camera because it's obviously on their face, which is not nice. I have Tony and Pani. One is the CEO of Rainbow and also the co-founder of Yaos. And Pani is the co-founder of Yaos. Guys, thank you for being here. How are you? Pleasure. Good, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I you love my photograph, Lavilla. Say that again. Love my photograph. <laughs> Just so you know, guys, Bunny hates having any photos of him online, so I thought I'd use a picture that's as close as I remember him. But um, <laughs> today, I'm, I'm so excited because we're going to be talking about something so important. The new normal, the, the COVID-19 has affected us in terms of how we interact. People are obviously working from home. You know, as you can see in my office, I'm by myself. But in terms of flexibility, I've always allowed my team to work from wherever, wherever they want. And I think what I like, the reason why I wanted to do this talk is because you're probably wondering, do we still need an office? What can we do to really utilize this space? And obviously, the two of you have been working in you know, with companies for a long time. Tony, obviously, you've been helping companies, big companies for a long time. So is you, Pani, you know, coming from the Daily Mail to the Financial Times and so forth. Maybe you, how do you feel? How, is, how are you coping with the situation? You need to ask which person are you going to ask first because they're <laughs> you guys are going to be speaking at the same time. That's, that's the new, that's the new etiquette. Yeah, the new etiquette for Zoom meetings. A new position will be fun. Tony, do you want to start? <laughs> so, um, you haven't got the question up. Please put the question up. So can... <laughs> it was an open question. I didn't get to the first question, but the hash companies prepare themselves during and after the lockdown. That's the main question for now. I think at this time it's a little bit late for, for what's going to happen during the lock, lockdown because they've already been through it. We've been in it two months now and um, I think we've spoken for a long time about people working from home and, the, and, and judging people on output rather than input. So there's always been an issue with working pe people working from home is trust. That's the biggest issue that people have had to overcome. But because of the lockdown, there's been no time to look at that or dwell on it. They've been forced to let their staff work at home. And I'm hoping that um, they will see um, people do actually work from home yeah. and, and trust them. And there's a way of managing them and checking the work that they've done if they need to. But if people deliver what they've been asked to do, whether they're at home or at the office, it shouldn't really make a difference. Yeah. So um, I think that's been taken up for the last two months. People have been working from home. Um, and after the lockdown, the, the, workplace, will, the workplace will change. Um, uh, long term, there's going to be, I think it's a really good and there's going to be some really positive changes. Yeah. Uh, but, for the immediate, but for the immediate return, which is what we're helping clients with at the moment, is how they can get staff back safely. Um, what, what, people are, what people are talking about are um, putting screens on desks so that they don't... Um, rather like the screens you have on the supermarket counters to protect the people from, from the customers. Mm -hmm. they, want to, they want to have those on desks. Now, we have supplied some of them, but I'm not that comfortable because they're acrylic and, and I think it's going to be a short-term fix. And I think after a few months, they'll end up in landfill and yes. maybe in the sea, which I think which, which doesn't sit well with me at all. Mm. Uh, so we've come up with... Um, cardboard screens which are 100% recyclable so you're looking after your people because you're giving them protection you're looking after the environment because they are they are easily recyclable and you look after your pocket because they're like it's like 10 pound for a set of screens and yeah so it's not a, it's not a money making thing we don't want to profit from other people's misfortune at the moment we just want our clients to get back quickly and, and these seem to be really well received and then we're talking to them about um creating corridors where in the corridors you go one way around an office mm -hmm. uh, rather than two way rather than people passing. It's not going to be easy. Things like if, if you occupy a few floors and you need to get in the lift, it's a one person 
one person a lift at a time. It's, it's really a hard thing to do. So I think the answer will be for, for people in the short term will be to restrict the amount of people that use the office. So yeah. getting a percent, 25, 30% of the people in and maybe rotate them. If you, have, if you have a third of the workforce in and you split them into A, B and C groups and you have A in one week or every three days or every two days, however it works, and you rotate them because then you're getting the distance in because you don't have the occupancy in there. Mm -hmm. um, and um, then everything else, like the meeting rooms, will, you need to make sure that people, are, people sit apart in the meeting rooms. I, th I think it will... Um, these are the immediate things. And then long term, you know, let, let Penny talk now and then I'll yes. come back to what... But before we bring it to Penny, I, f I forgot to mention, I forgot to ask you, can you just present what, you know, Rainbow, what is Rainbow? Um, Rainbow have been supplying office furniture for 30 years now. This is our 30th year. We're supposed to have a party this summer in June. So you <laughs> see that wow. it's falling down its face. We work with big organisations. So, we, we, you know, we, we've supplied furniture to... Um, to the Met Office, to Ipsos Mori's new head office, to Netta Porter's new tech hub, um, and we and we we work with we win clients, not projects. So we work with companies for many many years, and we just last year put the new furniture into the Financial Times head office, a company mm -hmm. that I worked with for 29 years at that time, and we're still looking after them now um, because we always recommend, make suggestions on products and um, services that will help the client rather than benefit us. And that way you, you, you and we service the hell out of our clients. So we look after them really well and that's how we maintain these long-term relationships. Mm -hmm. So that's why going back to the, to, the, to the screens, the inexpensive version, we're doing it to help the clients, to help them overcome this immediate issue rather than yeah. to make loads of profit because we want to work with them for, for many, many years. Yes. Um, but. Um, in the last few years, we were also doing a lot of work in hospitality. So we're working in a lot of football stadiums. We've delivered a lot of libraries as well, which is good. So we're, we're, we're finding different, uh, different markets and, and we're doing well in those. And they serve as well during the lockdown because they're the ones that we're still, we're still um, helping at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Honey, honey, do you want to introduce? <laughs> I just get people walking in. <laughs> Well, one of the problems of working from home is exactly that situation. You have a different set of distractions. Um, Yao's, it, Yao's was set, we, myself and Tony founded Yao's um, a year ago to deal with the issues that we found with the workplace. My background is architecture. Rainbow deal a lot with the, uh, the furniture and interiors. And we realized that people weren't actually utilizing their workspace to its optimum levels. They were, they were looking at designs and schemes that they thought worked, but didn't actually really work. Mm -hmm. So Yao's was created to effectively formalize and deliver the services that we've been doing for the last 25 years for individual clients anyway, um, whereby we, we go in there and we review the business, we review the space. We've got three different methods of doing that at the moment. It couldn't be increasing with, with uh, space utilization surveys, with interviews, with online questionnaires. And from that, we provide the business with a, with a detailed report and an overview of what is happening now mm -hmm. and how we think they can potentially improve that. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we recommend should be done every two to three years because as businesses evolve and change, they need to make sure that their space and their workspace evolves with them. Now, obviously, the whole um, coronavirus, COVID-19, has had a huge impact. And as Tony mentioned earlier, one of the big things for us is actually made people realize they can work from home or they can work remotely, which pre-COVID-19 would allow you to free up the workspace to do some more exciting things with it. In the short term, Tony's right. People have to try and um, work out methods of getting people into the workplace now. Mm -hmm. But the way it's going to have impact on the long term is going to be a completely different view of how we utilize the office. Yes. One of the things that people miss the most during the lockdown is not the, um, is not the office itself. It's the interaction with other people and the interaction with members of their team and other people in the office. I think that's going to come to the forefront more. Um, I think the office spaces may have a lot more social elements than they have now. They might not just be banks of desks where a lot of places still are. The tech companies have been doing this for years and we've been, we've been preaching about this for years and it was very difficult to get some people to actually realize that they could change and it was to their benefit. Yes. I actually, I'm looking at COVID-19 as a, as, a, as a plus. 
I think what it's done is it's made people realize there are different ways of working and there's flexibility. And companies that thought they couldn't do it have proven that they can. Yes, because they were, they were forced to force in a position, but they had no choice. And I think it's one thing that, you know, you guys have been talking about for such a long time. And I Sorry, know... Flavio, I don't know if it's your connection or mine, but that will... Are you, okay, so Pani is gone for a minute. We're going to get him back. But we've been talking yeah. about it for such a long time that um, it's important that we understand that the way after this lockdown, there's not going to be the same people looking for different options. And flexibility is definitely one of the key words that keep coming back. So I think us to the next question, which is around how can, yeah. how can uh, make sure I move because it's on the screen, how can they improve and maintain business continuity whether or not we're hit by another pick? What is your answer to that, Tony? Um, I feel that th this has been a learning lesson for, for everybody. I mean, it really has. So um, in the 30 years, we've been through four recessions and been through it's really strange times um, like not 9-11 which was never happened before you know the, the financial crisis and the banks collapsing in 2008 never never happened before these never, came, these never had such a big impact on the economy in such a short space of time um, we actually grew through all of the previous recessions so th but this this COVID lockdown is the first time ever in 30 years that I've looked out and thought, I'm, I'm actually not sure what we can do here. How can we help our clients? I'm always looking to help. It took me a little while to think about how we can help them, how we can help them overcome the issues that, that they're going to have. Um, technology has been instrumental in making this lockdown work. Without it, we'd have been in a lot of trouble. Yeah, it just wouldn't have happened. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 and obviously, I feel the government have taken consideration when when make when creating the lockdown if it wasn't possible for companies to carry on at home through with with the technology may, maybe they'd come up with a different solution to the problem but they have and it's worked um so continuity if it happens again i think people will be expecting it it's almost we know what's going to happen now whilst we, whilst maybe we don't like it uh whilst it doesn't suit a, most a, a lot of people and and a lot of businesses including ours are suffering because our clients are all closed the, you know all the offices are empty so so, so this is why we felt at a bit of a loss because we don't know how to help people there's i'm not going to phone people up and ask them about furniture when yes. you know, they don't know what's going to happen to their business so we we it's been really strange but i think i think we all everybody will learn a lot from this and the fact i mean i had been working on the cloud for four years uh, at rainbow and I, and I had no idea how vital and how important that was until we were forced to, to work from home. Yeah. Even my phones, I had voice over IP phones. I've heard the, the, the I've heard the terminology. I don't really know what it means. But mm. I could literally unplug my phone from the office, plug it in at home, and it's as though I'm working from the office. And I could, and everybody did it here at Rainbow, and we can phone each other on our extension numbers. Yeah. It's yeah. Incredible. So we carry on business as normal. So mm -hmm. we're able to. Do yeah. So I think, as you, I think, you know, what you summarized, I think you did make some great points. I think there's a situation where we just need to wait, and there's no point to try to sell when people are in a position to sell. But I think what really supports continuity and business continuity is the ability to just do the same thing at home thanks to technology. Penny, do you want to add something to that? Um, the, Tony's point is, is pertinent. They're, with the businesses have already proven they have the flexibility, have yeah. that built in now. So that, that will continue. If another peak comes through, there'll be a little bit of a warning, hopefully, and we can set back up and step back to where we were before. Um, with continuity, whatever's been placed in, put in place now, extend it. You know, there's this process. It's been an interesting one because people have turned around and said, it's, some, it's interesting how things are affected when you only do what you need to do, which is what's been happening for the last eight weeks. Yes. People are buying what they need to buy. People are only going out when they need to go out. Um, and that's effectively how business have been have needed to adapt to. Mm -hmm. Basically, work on the core, that need, then do what needs to be done. Everything else can fit in around that if it has to. That is true. It's funny because we, we're talking about the pre, you know, the post lockdown, which is first thing is making sure that it's safe, it's safe to work, you know, in the same environment. So with, you know, with uh, protection, as you mentioned, but there's also the element of how can we improve productivity with, with flexibility at the same time? Are you looking as well at how with YAWS, how you can support that with two strategies of 
pre-lockdown, you know, post-lockdown, what can we do now, but also after that, what can we do to make it further what, to improve productivity? What I found with, the, with our teams is um, when we are all in the same, there's, there's actually a benefit to, to sort of working distant, in, at distance. When we're in the same space, everybody is very, very reliant on everybody else. Mm -hmm. you know, especially the, the younger members of the team. Um, they're always asking questions because the structure is there. You're always there to support them. Yes. Um, and you don't realize there's also an element of, of micromanaging that happens. What I've realized when we've, when we've had to step back and people have been working at distance, because you're not there all the time, the, the, you're coming up with, the, the other members of the team are coming up with new ideas, new processes, new designs, new concepts, which maybe they wouldn't have done if we were all sitting in the same space. Mm -hmm. So it has freed things up a little bit. So there's, again, I always like to see where we can find the benefits in it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> with regards to offices, we have to do the things that make the employees comfortable because the employers want you back at work because they want the companies to run. But the, the employees have to feel comfortable enough to go back to work. And the employers have a, a liability for the health of their employees as well. Yeah. So a lot of this, again, is common sense. We're trying to find ways of making this work, of flexibility. Tony mentioned about putting the, um, the, the teams in shifts. So you've got A, B, and C, so you can rotate it. So people are working from home and coming into the office <clears throat> and keep those distances. These are short term. Some of these may flow through into the longer term element, but these are processes that need to be done now to, to kick things in, which mm -hmm. we saw a response to previous questions as well about you know, what happens if there's another peak. The structures yeah. are happening now. They're all running through properly. It depends. You know, I don't want to, don't want to be negative, but it depends what the next, what the next issue is. I can guarantee you that, you know, had had the illness affected children more than it does at the, than, than COVID nineteen, it would be a completely different. Oh yeah, it'll be completely. Yeah. So so we've been. You know the, the vulnerable and the elderly the elderly have their homes most of them and they live at home they live somewhere if it's and they can live on their own so they're easily um, shielded and much easier than if it were children if my children were at risk i wouldn't be i would have been completely different in every single thing that i did so mm. it's hard to say you know what the what the issue is yes that's a very good point i think you, you know my next question was how do you help your clients for this but i think you mentioned it already putting some you know, short-term solutions in place until we see the situation is fully under control. And after that, we see with Yaws, um, I think with Yaws as well, you know, looking at how we can really maximize and provide a place that feels safe, but also allow people to feel, um, to be much more productive. So again, we talk a lot about input and output. There's a different, there's gonna be a different, you know, there's gonna be a shift in terms of what leaders focuses on. My next question is very much about what can businesses learn post COVID nineteen. What do you What do you want to say, Penny? Let's have a Penny. Me, yay! Um, there's a culture shift. Yeah. I'm hoping that uh, uh, the positives that are coming through this, as someone mentioned earlier, aren't temporary. I'm hoping they come through and, and become part of the culture and the of the workspace and the, of the office environment. Mm -hmm. The um, We've always, at Yowes, we've always pushed through a heavy element on, and a big element on well-being and the employee. And what we've been watching and been seeing change slowly over the last five, ten years is businesses have become more employee focused, partly because they've realized that if they look after their employees, it'll look after the business and it will have some potential benefits, fiscal and otherwise, to the business. But also there's been a huge movement in the last few years as well with well-being. Mm. And you can't separate these elements. It's all intertwined. The workspace isn't just a physical space anymore. It's a cultural space. It's a physical space. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an environment. It's a health environment. And there's many layers of that kicking through. With regards to buildings, it could be simple things like the way the AC systems work and the different types of filters on the systems to make sure we've got clean air and better air quality in the spaces. There are things that can be done with the physical environment. There's things that can be done with the cultural environment of the actual business the way that the business works and interacts with its employees, mm -hmm. potentially the flexibility in the working from home. I'm hoping that feeds itself through. I'm hoping they give more trust to the employees. Um, Tony mentioned um, basically looking at the output that's created, not the, not the, uh, not clocking in the amount of time that's spent sitting at a desk. It's a lot more important to see the productivity and what's being created rather than just somebody sitting there. There's, there's something that well, I've forgotten what the phrase was. It's um, not absenteeism. It's where somebody's sitting at their desk but not actually being very productive at all. 
Yeah. Sorry, what was the phrase? Do you remember it? Pre pre presenteeism. When, so, when somebody, Thank you very when much, somebody yeah. has an issue um, that is occupying their brain space, they turn up to work in body but not in mind because other things are more important to them. Uh, and that actually costs industry a lot more than absenteeism because you don't see it. Uh, so it's something, we, it's something we've been talking about at Yow's for a long time. A lot, a lot as, as Panny said earlier, um, COVID has, uh, and the lockdown has brought to all businesses' attention the things that we've been talking about, about the occupancy levels of the office. You know, our occupancy of, work, of, of offices was between 50 and 70% on average. Yeah, we knew that um before and now if everybody works from home as i think they will do at least one day a week going forward um that's a further 20 percent reduction in, in occupancy in the work wow. people don't see it but if you walk through any office you'll see an abundance of empty desks all the time and that costs companies a huge amount of money um, we've always been advocates of of looking after your staff if you look after your staff they will look after the business as panny said but you need to do it because you care not because you you want them to to make more money for the company that's not how it is you have to do it because you care so we've been having discussions at rainbow with um, employees about um, after the lockdown post post uh, lockdown how 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 they're going to be able to work with their kids they've got young kids yet the schools are not open how can we help them so we're having conversations with people individually to work out what's best for them and how that can fit in and benefit the company this is really important because I care about people that, are, that, that work with me. Do you, do you know what I mean? I care about the team. I want to keep them together. I, don't want to make, I want to make it easy for them, not difficult. And for the past two months, they've been doing their work um, and they've been doing it from home. So I'm sure we can, we can carry this on. It's really important. Um, well-being is, is just vital. Uh, and the culture, people have been forced into trusting their employees. I hope they've found that... Um, the employees that the, their people have delivered on the work and and um, i'm sure that the majority of them have yes that's a very very good point and i think you know for all the conversations i had with different experts it's always around people i think if you Ooh. put people at the heart of your business you will have a winning business in a situation where people you know events industry and so forth people have a driving force of innovation people drive force of you know the culture and without that there's nothing i want to ask a question more towards you know the, you know the connection of let's say for example i run a business and I'm, you know I'm, i have my usual you know furniture supplier what would be the difference and the advantage of working with the owls in combination with rainbow as well and you know i think it's important to understand as well why the technology part of the owls can help as well a furniture business like your furniture solution business like yours tony or penny as well can respond a bit. i think Flavilla, the point is, we, the workspace isn't one thing anymore. Mm. It's not, it, it's, it's a multi, it has many, many facets and you have to look at them all together holistically. You can't just pick one. Yes. You can't just go, you can't create a, a beautiful office, but the culture doesn't support it. It will fail. Yes. You can't put amazing furniture in, but the, the, for, that looks great, but might not be specific to what the business wants or the people want. It will fail. Yes. So one thing that myself and Tony have realized is you have to look at the whole space. And what's brilliant is the employee is becoming more and more important. They're not just a resource anymore, they're a proper asset. Mm -hmm. And companies are realizing that and thinking, okay, well, if we look after them, they will look after us. And it's happening. And the companies that have done that properly are reaping the rewards. Good. Next question is more about business and how is your business individually coping with the situation? What have you put in place? Obviously, you mentioned already, Tony, your, your team is working from home. I think it's just like having the technology that allows them to do the same thing remotely. We talked about that already. Um, yeah, we've got the technology at home to allow that to happen. So we have teams, we have everything on the cloud, and we have voice over IP. Um, yes. But going back to what Panny said and, and the future, so, so we know what the immediate issue is getting people back to, to, to work and getting companies, get the people back safely is in the spacing, you know, the, the well-being workstations with the sanitizer and the gloves and all yes. we, we understand that. But long term, um, I think the changes are going to be really, really positive because yeah. I think there are so many people out there that didn't realise how much they enjoy going to work. Yeah. Not the commute. I'm sure I don't. I, I can't believe many people like their commute. <laughs> but when they get there, to meet the colleagues, the banter, the communication, the collaboration, 
the after dinner drinks, the lunchtime chats, all these things are really important. We're social animals, yeah? yeah. Uh, and we need to be with people and most people like their colleagues, yeah? And they're gonna be craving um, the return to work. Well, and certainly here at Rainbow, we've already been coming, there's a few of us already coming back. I cannot work at home. I've spent my whole life keeping work and um, home separate. So to start working from home, I found very difficult for the first two weeks. Fortunately, I live 10, 15 minutes away from the office and I came in and then as I've been in, others have joined me because they want to be here. I've not asked anyone to come in. I'm happy with them to stay at home, but there are four of us every day now because yeah. we like being at work. It's a different mindset. We talk to each other, we have a laugh. It's just a break from home um, and we get more done. That's how I work. Not everyone's the same. Other people are more uh, focused, more driven, and they motivate, and they can work from home themselves and, and, and lock themselves away and get a lot more work done. Personally, I like to be in the office, and I think Panny's completely right. Workspaces will become a lot more social after this, and it will be. I hope so too. I really hope the so. Landscape, the landscape will change, and of course, we're going to have to make um, allowances in, in the design and supply of furniture to offices to cater for all these people working at home. You're going to need more space for video conference calls mm -hmm. to take booths, individual booths or group meetings. We have about five minutes left, so I just want to make sure that we can wrap this up on time. So, Penny, do you want to add something quickly to the question? Anything else that you have? Sorry, Flavio, that was breaking up. You're breaking <laughs> This is not this is the beauty of technology. It's okay. I'm going to move to the next question, which is the last question before we wrap it up. What did you learn? Obviously, working with three colors wool. Who want to start? Tony, Penny, Tony. What about? Um, uh, we enjoyed working with three colors rule for our Yao's um, documents yes. and presentations. You know, you made us think about what's different, um, what makes Yao's different, why people should be interested in it. It just makes you think um, when you look at your branding and your story what people want to hear, what's the story you're telling. Mm -hmm. Story's story is everything, story is everything. How about you, Pani? Do you want to add something to that? Are well, you Pani? talking to me, Flavilla? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, if I can see the screen. We, I, 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 love, I love the way how proactive your team was. You know, we wanted to get things done quickly. We needed to yeah. launch very quickly. Uh, we got the, uh, the quality we wanted and we, you know, the flexibility was there all the way through supporting us. Glad. Thank you so much. I'm glad. To, is it, if people want to get in touch with you, Tony Penny, what's the best way to, if you have more question about YALS, have more question about architecture, design, or, or, or just furniture? Uh, our website is rainbowdesign.co.uk. Okay. Uh, and you'll find our contact numbers there. Yes, um, and we'll put the it. The office number is treble eight one one two three four o two o treble eight one one two three four. I will put the number. What about you, Penny? And Yao, sorry, Flavilla. I was going to say Yao's is um, Y O W S E, yao's.com. Uh, the email contact is hello at Yao's. Just drop us a line and we can get in touch. And the details are all on the website. Thank you so much. I, guys, I would definitely advise you to get in touch with these gentlemen. They know what they're talking about. I've been doing for years, even they look like they're 20 something. And even just have a conversation. You know, we are wasting a lot of money just using things that we don't always need and this is a chance to use and have a conversation with an expert if you think that they are valuable to you. Obviously for me as well I have a call to action if you want a free brand assessment to figure out what is wrong with your brand what is you can improve and miss out opportunities feel free to reach out for freecolorswood.com and we'll be there to help you and obviously you can find me on most social platforms I'm super active super loud super crazy as usual but this is me. So again, guys, if you found Fabula, and there's only one, it's me. I hope that you enjoyed this last session. This is the end of business in the new, business resilience in the new normal. And I will see you very soon. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Hey, guys. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.